Next, a new plan for tackling the ever-growing burden of Alzheimer's disease and targeting specific drugs to fight it. Margaret Warner has our story. The numbers are daunting. More than 5 million Americans now suffer from Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. And barring a breakthrough, the figure could triple by 2050. That prospect prompted the first ever National Alzheimer's Plan, mandated by Congress and formally announced today. The Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius, set a deadline of 2025 to find effective ways to prevent and treat the disease. So a short time ago, the fight against Alzheimer's lacked a national focus and a consistent, coordinated partnership with the nation's Alzheimer's community. Today, we've made the first historic investment of funds and a 15-year commitment to prevention and treatment. The bulk of the new money, $50 million already approved this year and $100 million in 2013, will go for research. So far, there's no cure. The research focus will be on testing the most promising new therapies, including an insulin nasal spray and a drug to prevent the buildup of a protein associated with Alzheimer's. The plan also includes a new Alzheimer's.gov website, offering struggling families information on available federal and community resources. My wife's Alzheimer's was diagnosed very early because we had had the experience of my mother. And I knew from behavior, not forgetting as much as just general behavior, that there was something seriously wrong with her. And it provides training for health care providers in identifying and managing the disease. And for more on all this, we turn to two people involved with the new Alzheimer's plan. Dr. Francis Collins is director of the National Institutes of Health, which is funding key trials, including two announced today. And Eric Hall is president and CEO of the Alzheimer's Foundation of America, which offered input in designing the plan. Welcome, gentlemen. Dr. Collins, welcome to you. There, there are elements here that we've heard a lot about before, research, education, outreach. What is new and different in this plan? Well, first of all, let me say I think there is a new sense of excitement on the scientific community about the potential for making real strides in understanding what causes this disease and how to intervene. Just in the last two or three years in a research coming from genomics, coming from an understanding of stem cells, coming from the ability to identify new potential drug targets, the field is energized. And so it is the right time, both given the enormous public health significance and the significance to individuals and families and the scientific opportunity to ratchet up our efforts here to really move in the direction of identifying potential prevention methods mm -hmm. and treatments. And today we are announcing two large clinical trials aimed at those goals that we're quite excited about. And I want to get back to those trials. First, let me ask you, Eric Hall, working with families, caregivers, what's new here to you? What, how is this going to make a difference? <clears throat> well, I think the you... fact that we have a plan is in and of itself really important for families coast to coast. Uh, they now understand that people are recognizing the plight that they are living day in and day out. The other part of the plan, we, we focus a lot on research, but there's also a very strong clinical care component to this plan, and there's also long-term support services as part of this plan. The education piece alone, the website, other activities that we'll be engaged in, all of that is really critical because in the absence of a cure or prevention, care really does become the priority. So, Dr. Collins, back to you. Let's Tell us about these two studies. First, the one testing this insulin nasal inhalant. Now, why that? What is the link? What do researchers see between insulin and Alzheimer's? Well, insulin is a growth factor, and apparently it has the capability of stabilizing neurons, brain cells. We've learned about that indirectly from basic science efforts. And not long ago, in a smaller pilot study, the idea of actually administering insulin by a nasal spray, which gets into the brain, was tested in individuals who were early in the onset of what appeared to be Alzheimer's disease, and there were indications of benefit. It was a relatively small study. We're excited about the results, but we need to test this now in a much larger group, 
And that's what this new study that's being announced today will do, mm -hmm. spending $8 million to study 240 individuals to see what happens. Now, the other one is actually aimed at prevention. And yes. can you simply explain that? It's to test a certain drug with a particular extended family in Colombia. So why are we going to Colombia uh, in South America? Well, because in that particular country, there is a very large extended family that has an early onset form of Alzheimer's disease caused by a single glitch in the DNA. And those individuals, if they've inherited that, are a very, very high likelihood of getting this disease in their 40s. That means that they are at already very high risk and very willing to participate in research that might prevent the disease, even before any symptoms have appeared. So about 300 individuals in that family will be given the chance to receive a new therapy, a monoclonal antibody that aims to clear out this protein called amyloid, which deposits in the brain and see whether that can, in fact, reduce the likelihood of going on to full-blown disease. And we're going to follow this very carefully with a variety of measures using brain imaging, measurements of proteins in the blood and the spinal fluid. And we're going to learn a lot about what kinds of indicators will help us in the future to say whether a treatment is working or not. Eric Hall, how big of a hunger is there out there for this kind of something effective to prevent it? Well, I think Dr. Collins just said it. You know, it, we're really in a position where we need to learn more. And so the Alzheimer's Foundation of America really applauds this administration for making such incredible strides and not simply um, talking the talk, but also now uh, putting resources behind it. But I mean, in, t in terms of prevention, as I understand it, this is the first test that will ever, or trial that will ever be done on people who haven't shown any symptoms yet. Sure. Isn't that one of the greatest fear of families, that by the time they see the symptoms, it's really right. too late it, so, so far. yeah, look, we, we are dealing with a disease that has terrified our country and terrifies the world. And so the possibility that perhaps we will learn something out of here that will form a preventative measure for Alzheimer's disease would be miraculous, incredible, and truly probably the answer to everyone's deepest fears. And so in order to get there, though, we, we need to be engaged and we need to step in. And at least this administration has really taken mm -hmm. those steps to do just that. And so I would say, you know, for, for families at home, they're probably ecstatic that they're being recognized, that their care for their loved one and that Alzheimer's in their family is being recognized. They're ecstatic about all the support that is coming, but also, too, as caregivers, they have their own fear that they, too, may end up with this disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Dr. Collins, finally, back to you. Looking at the big picture here, you said there's a lot of new optimism, but is it fair to say that still there is currently no known effective either a drug to either prevent or retard or cure this disease? Despite a great deal of work over many decades, we do not at the present time have a convincing way to prevent the disease. We have some drugs that can actually improve the symptoms of individuals who've developed early signs of Alzheimer's, but nothing that actually delays uh, the progression in a significant way or treats or prevents the disease. So we have a big charge ahead of us to achieve those outcomes and especially to do so by 2025. But I'm optimistic that with this Alzheimer's plan, with the way in which these communities have come together, with the administration's commitment to an additional $130 million for research this year and next, uh, that we are going to have a real opportunity here to make a difference. And our country needs this. And all those people who are waiting uh, for something to happen need this, and their families do. But I think today we have more hope than we've had in a long time. Well, Dr. Francis Collins and Eric Hall, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. And a reminder, a new PBS website launched today designed for Americans over 50. It's called Next Avenue and taps trusted sources for information about work, health, finances, leisure, and caregiving. Explore nextavenue.org by following a link on our homepage.